If you own real estate in Fairfax County, then this January Market Insight is for you. I'm Melvin Yates, your neighborhood real estate broker with Exit Flagship Realty. On this month's Fairfax County Real Estate Market Insight, we'll focus on empowering you with the real estate facts, not fluff. I'm gonna share the five things you need to know, plus I'll give you the national data and explain how it's affecting us locally. Now my office has over 160 awesome realtors serving clients like you in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So we can definitely help you put a real estate game plan together. Now for the numbers. Last month, the average sales price in all of Fairfax County was $708,455. This is a 7.8% increase over the last 12 months and a 3.9% increase over the last 30 days. So what that means, for example, if you purchased a home for $600,000, let's say a month ago, on average, that home has appreciated by $24,000 just in a month's time. That's pretty awesome. Now, the average days on market, which is the time it takes to find a buyer for a home sold in Fairfax County last month, was 26 days. And over the last month, we had 757 new homes come to market, which is the number of homes that were listed for sale. However, we still only have about two weeks of total inventory in all of the county, which means that there is a greater demand than supply. Now, though this may seem slightly challenging for my buyers, this means huge opportunity for my sellers, who should strongly consider getting their ducks in a row. Now, as far as home sellers who accepted an offer during the month, otherwise known as pending, there were 870 of them. That represents 115% of the 757 new listings that even came on the market for sale. Now, ultimately, there were 1,348 homes that did sell in all of the county last month. That's down 12.8% over last month and down 3% over last year this time. But as the data shows, this is simply a matter of supply and demand. My agents have several quali highly qualified buyers who want to buy right now in Fairfax County, and they're willing to pay top dollar. I just need a few houses for them. So if you're thinking about moving up, moving down, or maybe moving away, your financial wishes really can come true. Now, before I jump into the national data and explain how it affects us locally, feel free to text me any address. I'll shoot over a free market analysis on that specific home, or you can just use the link to get an estimate of value from our website. And as always, you can text, call, or email me anytime. I'll continue to work at being the most educated advisor on real estate topics in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. First, a quote here from Bill McBride from Calculated Risk. It is possible that rising mortgage rates will slow the housing market, or the Fed might raise rates sooner than expected due to the recent pickup in inflation. But I believe one thing is certain, inventory will tell the tale. There's so much speculation in the market right now, what's going to happen with mortgage rates, what's going to happen with the Fed, what's inflation doing, how is COVID and Omicron affecting the market? Now, this is a look at housing inventory year over year. So what Realtor.com does here is they look at where we were in December 2020 through December 2021, basically the last 12 months. The national average, as you can see, is almost 27% down year over year. And you can look across the country and see there is a significant lack of inventory everywhere. So this means huge opportunity for home sellers right now. Now this next chart shows inventory or supply going all the way back to January of 2019. The record of low December and January last year over two, of under two months supply. And right now we're, we're pretty close to that as, as well. Now let's look at buyer activity. Though there is a lack of inventory, buyers are continuing to come into the market. Now this is a, sh a chart from showing time, which is what we use to measure activity. Obviously, if people aren't scheduling showings, then they aren't buying homes. But we look at this past November of 20, 2021 as compared to last November of 2020. And we're ahead in showings, stronger activity than last November. And we see that strong activity continuing to happen from buyers across the country. You know, it's, it's not slowing down as you can see, and showings still continue to crush pre-pandemic numbers. Now, this is a look at showings of the last five Novembers, with 2017 through 2019 being the last, you know, normal years. Now, Michael Lane, president of Showing Time, says it, says it best this way. Showings traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demand remains strong. The fact that every region showed a year-over-year -year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred, and it speaks to their desire to keep searching for their next home. As you can see, buyers are out there and they're out there in force. 
Now on this next slide, you can see pending sales, which is the next leading indicator of closed sales. The numbers are higher than pre-pandemic numbers. So if you're a homeowner, you may be wondering, what does all this have to do with you and, and where's your biggest opportunity? I'll tell you, it's in home equity. It may be driving a lot of buyers saying, hey, we've got this equity, do we harness that and move up? Maybe if we're retiring, moving down and downsize, or use that equity to build a little bit of a nest egg. Do you know how much you owe on your home? Do you know how much your home is worth? That's what gives you the equity. Now, CoreLogic's third quarter home equity report shows, shows that the average homeowner with a mortgage gained in equity $57,000 over the last year. I know that's a shocking number to so many people, you know, that we need to get out there. But, but think about, you know, you may think about doing something with that extra $57,000 that you just gained over the last year. Now, 31.1%, that's year over year percent for increase in equity in the U.S. Homes with more, those are homes with mortgages. $3.2 trillion, that's the rise in equity as a country. And they go on to say this summer, home price growth reached its highest level in more than 45 years, pushing equity gains to another record high. So equity, no doubt, is the shining star of the pandemic. Now, a report came out a couple of months ago saying that in every major city, it was actually cheaper to buy a home than to rent when you consider the equity growth right now. Equity is the benefit of owning a home that many, many people enjoy. Now, Adetta Cushy of First American shares that U.S. households own $36.8 trillion in owner-occupied real estate, but there's only $11.5 trillion in debt and the remaining $25 trillion is in equity. So in inflated adjusted terms, homeowners had an average, nationwide average, of $294,000 in equity in quarter three of 2021. That's a historic high, it's unreal. Now, remember last month I spoke about all the pent up seller demand. A lot of families are considering selling their home. You know, they wanna do it safely and at the right time. My job is to educate you. So let's look quickly at mortgage rate projections again. You know, you can see here from Fannie, Freddie, NAR, and MBA, and what they're saying about 2022 broken down by quarter. Now, on average, they're projecting somewhere between 3.5% and 4% in the second half of this year. So they're projecting rates to be rising. Now, as far as foreclosures are concerned, McClare Bolton-Smith from CoreLogic says, we may see a little bit of an uptick in foreclosure rate in 2022. Just an uptick, though. From an extraordinarily low level, we're not expecting to see big increases. Again, we expect delinquency rates overall on home mortgages to actually continue to be quite, quite low. Now, I don't see banks being in a posture trying to foreclose on people right now. Uh, you know, I think they're trying to work out whatever they can with homeowners. Now, as far as pricing, we've talked a lot about it over the last several months, you know, and we've seen unbelievable pricing in this country. And, and this question is, 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 has pricing peaked? So I'm using this graphic here to show you FHA, CoreLogic, Case Shiller. This is a look back going, going back to January 2021, a year ago, all the way through October and November of last year. So let me break this down for you. Because the title here has home pricing acceleration peaked. The funny thing about this graphic is we're starting out at 10% appreciation. You know, we're already starting out at historical high appreciation and we're rising each month. So this is a measure of year over year you know, what, e what each of these organizations does is in January of this past year, they look at January 2021 as compared to January 20, you know, what did prices grow by? And we know in 2020, when 2020, they grew by about 10%, and then each month goes on from there. Now, we said prices appear to look like they've peaked, and they do. But here's the question. Have they peaked or have they plateaued? Now, I think there's been a peak, but it's a, but it's a plateau that we're about to see, you know, who knows? I don't, I don't think we're going to see prices or appreciation drop from 18, 19% down to 5%. Now I'm going to show you what forecasters are saying, which is about 5% appreciation over the next year. But I don't think you're going to see us go from 18% appreciation down to 5% overnight or even in a year. But no doubt, appreciation is still very, very strong in the market. We expect appreciation to continue into 2022. And if you look at those that are forecasting appreciation right now for 2022, the average is 5.2%, you know, basically anywhere from seven and a half to 2.8, you know, but you can see that forecasters are already starting to up-level their forecasts. So I think that this 5.2% is a little low. I think we're gonna go above that, but how much above that, I, I really don't know. 
but I think we're gonna see more than 5% appreciation in real estate in 2022. And remember, as appreciation goes down in this graphic, that's not depreciation, it's just less appreciation. And always remember, month over month, year over year, appreciation is cumulative. You know, I wanna explain that very well because in the graphic, you, you may miss that. You know, you might think I missed the hump. No, you didn't miss it. You didn't miss anything. We're just seeing less appreciation than what we saw last year. You know, the word that we often use and we use last month is deceleration in appreciation, which means it's just coming at a slower rate. Think about a car going, going down the road decelerating, still moving very fast, just not as fast as it was a few minutes ago. So the bottom line again here from CoreLogic, overall, do you think that 2022 will be another year, strong year for housing? You know, a little bit higher mortgage rates and we do think home sales will continue to rise and actually reach a 16 year high in 2022. So no doubt across the country, we're seeing a lot of things happening in real estate. We need more inventory. Buyers are in full force, but overall it looks like a very, very good year in the real estate market coming up this year in 2022. So remember, you can always use the link to get an estimate of value on any home from our website or text me an address and I'll shoot over a free market analysis. Lastly, you can always text, call, or email me anytime. I'm honored to be your trusted source in real estate matters in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. See you soon.